Health Sciences Institute, leading the transformation in evidence-based, patient-centered care. I want to thank everybody for attending our November Learning Collaborative session. And for those of you that are new to our learning collaboratives, this is a networking and learning community for individuals who are serving folks with chronic diseases, health-related issues. And uh, these are free non-commercial skill-building webinars offered in partnership with Partners in Improvement. And as I always like to mention, uh, we organize uh, these events, but these events are supported by, by all of you. As usual, we'll start with our learning presentation, and that will wrap up at 11.30 Central, and then uh, we'll follow uh, uh, with our community call. Today, uh, it's my pleasure to invite uh, Dr. Susan Butterworth back again. Uh, and Dr. Butterworth, many of you know, has uh, been in the health promotion field for over 20 years. She received her doctoral degree in adult education and training uh, with a Cognate in Health Promotion from Virginia Commonwealth, and her expertise is really motivational interviewing in healthcare. She's well published in this area. She's received two National Institutes of uh, Health grants to study, and uh, also uh, she's published uh, papers on the theory and outcomes of health coaching, and at Health Sciences, she's been our lead technical advisor in the area of evidence-based health coaching, MI training, and performance improvement. Uh, welcome, Susan. Well, thank you, Blake. It's it's always wonderful to be here in the Learning Collaborative, and I always appreciate the, the interest and the questions that we get afterwards. Um, what we're going to do today, um, I'm kind of excited about it because even though um, we're not face-to-face, -face, um, we're going to have, hopefully, a really productive interactive experience. Um, I am going to go quickly over a little bit about why measuring health coach proficiency is so important and, and how we want to make sure we have good quality assurance. And we could, there, there's other coding tools out there, but we're going to code today using the HCPA, um, the Health Coaching Performance Assessment Tool, and because we're going to be using that tool, I want to make sure that you kind of understand the, the background and the validation of it. And then we are going to actually listen to a real live session. We've gotten permission um, from this organization um, to use real uh, session with the patient for coding and education purposes. And then we're going to kind of check out how we did and, and look at kind of um, the difficulties and the beauty of this coding system. And then we're going to look at the end in terms of how could this be used in, in your organization. So. You know, if, if you're a health coach, you really want to do a good job. You want to help people. And sometimes you have a pretty good sense of that on the phone. You can tell that you've connected with someone. But how do you really know that you're doing a good job? How do you know that your skill set is where it should be, that you're going to um, be able to enact good outcomes? And if, if you are in a situation where you are a manager, how do you give feedback to, to folks? How do you actually standardize and measure what they're doing across the board and make sure that you are documenting this quality assurance process and making sure that your clients are satisfied, that you really are offering the best evidence-based practice and health coaching that you can? We think it's really important in the health coaching domain to use a validated tool to measure what we call fidelity. And we have been talking to lots of folks, and there seems to be a lot of interest in this. Um, and, and some of you have already been doing this, and some of you are, are, are thinking about it. And I would really encourage you uh, to, to move forward in looking at what approach are you using? How do you know that you're using this approach on a consistent basis? And that's, that's being able to assess um, that you're actually using the model that you're using, that um, when you look at your outcomes, you know that your outcomes are based on this approach. Otherwise, you're kind of guessing, well, what, what made us successful? 
And if, if we don't achieve significant outcomes, um, then we, we can say, well, this intervention wasn't effective rather than saying, well, we're not even sure if the intervention was followed. I am quite confident that um, most of you out there have really effective health coaching programs. And so this is a way to talk about how do we measure what you're doing and help everyone kind of take that step forward. So key components, if we want to measure the fidelity to an approach and we want to really make sure that the approach that we're using is effective, is obviously, first of all, you have to be using an approach that can be measured. It needs to be something that's been standardized, that there's certain traits and characteristics that have been identified consistently so you know when X, Y, Z is done, that means that you're using this particular approach. And as an example today, we're going to use motivational interviewing. Um, it's the, the approach that um, I have been studying for, gosh, over the last decade. And it, at this point in time, it does have the most um, standardized approach, the ability to assess the fidelity, and also it's got the, the, the clinical trials that show it's effective. So that's an example of saying, okay, we have a standardized intervention or approach, and we know it's effective. Um, you also have to make sure that you have a tool, a coding tool that's been developed for this particular approach, as well as for the type of intervention that you're doing. A 50-minute counseling session using therapeutic measures is not the same as a 10-minute um, encounter that happens in healthcare. Obviously, you want coders, um, and we call people that are using this coding or assessment tool, we call them coders. We want them to be experienced. We want them to have a high degree of inter-rater reliability, which means you can kind of interchange. It doesn't matter if, if one coder codes a, a particular session or another one, you're going to get very similar results. And um, once you have the system down, it's really important to do this consistently on random encounters over time so that you can get snapshots of the group, of the individual, and, and assure that you have continuing quality assurance. Um, the, the downside of, of a health coaching approach, such as motivational interviewing, is that sometimes our skills will kind of go up right after we've, we've been energized and we've had a nice workshop, but if there's no follow-up and there's no personal feedback over time, people can drift back into the old ways of doing things. So what makes um, you know, a, good, a good coding tool? Now we're going to talk about the HCPA, but there's other tools out there. But it should be based on the latest behavior change research. It should be, in this case for us on the phone today, it should be a tool that's designed for what we're doing, which is healthcare encounters, and it should be validated. Um, in addition, we think it's important to provide both um, feedback on an individual level as well as be able to give aggregate reports. So when we went to develop the, the coding tool, this HCPA, again, that's really what, what we were doing. We were saying, okay, what are some components that reflect the most current? There's been phenomenal amount of work just done in the last five years. Um, by Martins and Moyers and, and, and some other folks in the, the motivational interviewing world. We wanted to use as our base the most validated coding tool that's out there today, which is the MITEI, and, and many of you are familiar with the MITEI. And we did want this tool to be practical. We wanted it to be able to use to be used in an eight-minute, you know, again, healthcare encounter. And we really did want to make sure that we were providing a report to clinicians, to providers, that would really give them some feedback specifically and concretely. We also wanted to make sure that we had data, again, that was aggregated, that was on a program level that we could provide to, to management to say, here's a snapshot of your organization, and four months later, six months later, here's where you are now. So what does make a good coder? Very simply, they're proficient in the approach that you're using for the intervention, they're really good at using the tool, and they've demonstrated inter-rater reliability as compared to, you know, the gold standard co coder. In other words, they're really close 
when they they code a session independently, you can say that they're it's it's really reliable time and time again.